I'm Robin Madison. And I'm Ken Ohms. And we're Legislative Analysts with the Fiscal Services Division of the Legislative Services Agency, or LSA. This interim, we updated the form for agencies to use in responding to requests from LSA analysts for data in regard to legislative proposals. The new form will be attached to the email requests that agencies receive from division staff. This 10-minute training will outline the parts of the new form and provide some guidelines for submitting responses. First, a little background on why we did this. The old form was restrictive in presenting information and interpreting responses. Our goals were to add clarity to instructions, broaden response areas, and make the form easier to fill out and read. We gathered input from analysts representing all appropriations subcommittees, legislative fiscal offices around the nation, and Iowa executive branch agencies. A few notes about the new form. It's now a Word file rather than an Excel spreadsheet. The gray boxes that you see are just formatted paragraphs designed to make your answers to our questions stand out from the form's standard text. They are not text boxes and are not locked or limited in any manner. Don't worry if you lose any formatting as you fill out the form. There are instructions and hyperlinks to additional information at the top. Additionally, agencies that have designed their own bill analysis tools may submit that analysis or memo as long as it covers all of the items included in this form. The first response areas on the form cover basic information. Fill in the bill number and maybe a title associated with the request, the name of your agency, and your contact information. The first major area of the form is the bill summary. For this part, be as thorough as the bill or policy area requires. Be sure to address the major provisions with a priority on areas that have a fiscal impact later in the form. Conceptually, a single subject bill would be a relatively short summary, but a larger omnibus bill changing several different programs would require more text. In this example, the Board of Pharmacy summarized Senate Study Bill 3074, which was a three-section bill, in two sentences, so you can be concise. The Issue Details section goes beyond the previous section of the form to give agencies the opportunity to provide additional information about the purpose of the bill, background on any existing program that is being modified, and any concerns related to it. Some questions to answer here might include whether the legislation is required by a federal mandate or other law change. Does it overlap or duplicate existing programs or law? What problems will it solve? And what is the history of those problems? Are there any long-term effects? Will the need for the legislation eventually expire? Will it create additional needs after a few years? This field can be an opportunity to inform your fiscal analyst of concerns that may need to be brought to the attention of legislators, even if they're not related to the fiscal estimate. On this and other sections of the form, please don't assume that your fiscal analyst already knows something. Although you may have already spoken to the analyst about the legislation, it is still helpful to have it all written in one document. The next three sections address the fiscal impact directly, assumptions, funding sources, and the actual calculation of your bottom line estimate of the legislation's impact on your agency. In these sections, be sure to address the impact on local units of governments, such as counties, cities, and local school districts. Assumptions are equally as important to the fiscal analyst as the calculation. We need to understand how you arrived at the numbers used in your final calculation. This may require providing several underlying calculations. For example, if I receive an estimate of 600,000 for providing K-12 students with educational widgets, and the final calculation is 5,000 students times $120, I will look to the assumptions section for some answers. I'll want to know how you arrived at the number of students. Why is it only 5,000? That may require you to include one or more additional calculations to explain. I'll also want to know how you arrived at the $120. Is that a hard number provided by the widget vendor? Is it your estimate or someone else's? If it's an estimate, what's it based on? Again, additional calculations may be needed and sources of estimates should be included at the end of the form. 
Also, if you believe the legislation has no fiscal impact on your agency, please explain why in this section of the form. For instance, your assumption might be that the bill conforms the Iowa Code to current agency practice, so there'll be no new costs that result from the bill. In the portal, you'll be able to check a box to indicate that there's no fiscal impact. However, if you don't supplement that by uploading this form with an explanation, you are likely to receive a follow-up request from the analyst asking for one. The funding sources section of the form is relatively straightforward. Please tell us what funding sources the legislation will impact and be sure to address all sources of funds, not just the state general fund. This may include private grant funds, a gifts and bequests account, revolving funds, balances carried forward from previous year's appropriations, or other state fund appropriations or transfers. Also, please be sure to address any potential impact on your agency's revenue streams. And please explain any restrictions on the use of the funds identified. The Fiscal Division has access to the state accounting system. So this section also asks that you provide accounting system codes, such as fund numbers, appropriation numbers, and unit detail codes that will help us find current and historical information for the program. The last of the fiscal impact sections is the estimated fiscal and operational impact. The tool provides a few bullet points that outline some broad categories that the fiscal impact might fall into. Joint Rule 17 has different requirements for impacts above and below $100,000, but it is important to have information about impacts below that threshold since multiple impacts across different agencies could total greater than $100,000 for a bill. Feel free to use these narrative introductions as a starting point for the impact, and then perform the calculations from your assumptions listed above. Again, be sure to include impacts to local units of government. Some of the items that should be clearly addressed in this section include increases and decreases to both revenues and expenditures, shifts in staffing or FTE workloads, be sure to clearly separate impacts by fund if multiple funds are involved, and finally, Excel files may be submitted in addition to this form if more space is needed. This sample response from the Board of Pharmacy will show the same fiscal impact presented two different ways. The first is a narrative response where the impact by year is outlined in paragraph form. The second style shows the same impact outlined in a table, a hypothetical bill that lays out several transfers and allocations for a program would probably be easier to visualize in a table. Please feel free to use whatever style is sufficient for the complexity of the bill. There's only one section on the form left to cover and a final tip on using the LSA portal. The last section should list any outside sources utilized, such as reports from federal agencies, national average estimates, or information on similar costs from other states. Additionally, when you receive an email with the new form attached, keep an eye out in the email for any special instructions or information from the analyst. For instance, the bill might not have a direct financial impact on your department, but your department may have data that can help us in determining the bill's fiscal impact. The email will explain if specific information is needed from your agency and may provide other relevant information or instructions. Finally, you are able to upload multiple files in the LSA portal. This could be helpful if the fiscal impact information is better presented in an Excel spreadsheet. Simply click the Browse button each time to upload a file. Then click Confirm Changes and Save. The uploaded files will then appear in the upper portion of the request. Thank you for watching this training and be sure to review the Fiscal Note Guide or contact your fiscal analyst with any questions you have about responding to fiscal data requests.